Yeah, the Central Park Children's Zoo was a zoo that had been designed originally in the 30s and had fallen on hard times. It contained a lot of kind of rather tacky elements like Noah's Ark and other animal-related artifacts that were no longer part of the zoo's style. They wanted to make it much more natural and much more about real animals, and they wanted the children to be able to experience real animals. But we also wanted to create an element of fantasy, so we had a few ideas to do that, one of which was to create a way of entering the zoo through a huge stump of an enormous tree, which was of course fake, it was made of concrete, but the children felt like they were walking through this tree in order to get into the zoo. And then once they were in the zoo, this was really aimed at children, and there was many different things that children could do, different ways of experiencing both the animals, but also how they went, got around the zoo, and there were places where they could hop over water, jumping on lily pads, other things of that kind that were playful and we think children enjoyed them. I think they did, because I watched them many times, experiencing them. And then the animals themselves, wherever possible, the animals were animals that could be petted. So they were sheep, and they were cows, they were domestic animals, there were no wild animals. They were animals that were children friendly, and that weren't totally freaked out by constant attention. Underlying it was the sort of somewhat corny theme of I guess it was Alice in Wonderland or whatever. I can't even remember now exactly what the theme was, but it, there was a story theme too, which children could pick up on and experience as they walked through. Working with the Wildlife Conservation Society was a real collaborative process. You know, we worked, developed ideas together. They had certain principles and certain goals in, in mind, which we shared, but which we didn't necessarily generate because that was their specialty. And then we brought to it our own design ideas and, and some sense of having worked with animals, what worked and what didn't work in terms of how animals could be shown and how they could be experienced, particularly by little kids. The approach to into the zoo was this winding path which we felt was sort of sympathetic to the Homesteadian landscape in, it, in its way. It was, it was more like the ramble than any other part of Central Park, but it had some of those qualities and heavily planted and so forth. Without trying to recreate a 19th century zoo, we tried to make something that was sympathetic and responded to the landscape of the park itself. I think the Pullmanship gates were something rather special and which we obviously wanted to keep, but there wasn't much else that, that was so sacred that we had to hang on to it. But as far as I recall, there was, we didn't have to keep anything else. The buildings, clearly the building, the, the, uh, the comfort station and the little restaurant and uh, you know the other, the infrastructure had to stay. The, the job couldn't afford completely rip everything apart. And as many of the trees as we could save, we did.